Okay, so we talked about linear program. I tried to say that uh, we looked at a particular instance of a linear program, the one resulting from min cost flow tracking. And I was saying that this is one particular instance of linear programs themselves. Now, linear programs, I, I absolutely you know, cannot uh, convey in words the importance of them because all kinds of scheduling, uh, transportation and so on problems can be expressed in terms of linear programs or of integer linear programs. In that sense, um, it was one of these you know, techniques uh, or technologies which, uh, besides invention of radar and so on, were decisive for the outcome of World War II. And um, hence, there was a huge effort on all sides to develop the technology of solving these operations research problems. And you can glean a little bit of this importance from the fact that when in the, I think in 1971, um, a Soviet mathematician uh, came up with a technique to solve, um, where he could provably solve linear programs in polynomial time. This was considered a Sputnik moment uh, of mathematics. So, you know, it made it to the New York Times. <laughs> I mean, when does a when does news about an algorithm make it to the New York Times? Not very often. Huh? I mean, if you manage that with yours, you know, that's an accomplishment. <laughs> and um, if, if you, uh, for those not familiar with the, the term, so, so Sputnik, of course, was the uh, the first satellite in the world, and it was a shock in, in Cold War times to the West that they apparently had been outrun by the Soviet Union. And here, similarly, there was, you know, honestly panic in, in the West that uh, they had been, uh, you know, less left in the dust um, by um, Soviet technology or here Soviet operations research. And uh, then a few years later, a grad student from Berkeley um, of Indian descent, I think, um, came up with a method that was also polynomial time, but also faster in practice. And then, you know, people felt the, the world order had been saved. Yeah? And um, this is, uh, anecdote is very nicely described in, in a book, the reference of which I will include in the, in the references that we have here. All right, so a short message is super important class of optimization problems. And it's actually one which is fairly easy to conceptualize geometrically, at least as long as we don't talk about the duality um, in linear programming. And I don't want to talk about particular algorithms to solve it. I just want to talk about the geometry of linear programs and then they sort of suggest, you know, what algorithms you could come up with. So I here have an example illustration where, so we said linear programming, the objective is linear, the constraints are linear and in integer linear programs, in addition, I have this integrality requirement. X here is a vector, C is a cost vector and this is a vector and matrix uh, describing my constraints. So here I have an example illustration. Um, I have a two-dimensional space to optimize over. So um, here are my coordinate axes, x1, x2. And now we have this cost vector. The cost vector, I pretend that it points in the direction of the blue arrow. And hence, if we want to minimize cost, we want to walk as far as possible in the opposite direction of the cost vector. And in the background of this image, you see this shading from dark blue, meaning high cost, 
to uh, light blue or white, meaning low cost. And if there were no constraints, well, we would walk infinitely far in the direction of the top right corner and be ever happy. But we have these constraints, so we're looking for the best solution subject to those constraints. And let's try and visualize those. So if uh, AX should be no more than B, um, I'm using a bit of a funny convention here where I say A1 transpose is the first row. I pretend that we have three constraints here. You know, I've invented this number three just because it was easy to plot. Um, so if I have three constraints, uh, my matrix A has three rows and I've called them A1 transposed, A2 transposed and A3 transposed. So this is my matrix A times X should be no more than B. And well, if you multiply this out, then I get uh, three inequalities here, namely that A1 transpose X should be no more than B1. And so here we have the um, Euler normal form of an equation, if this was an equality, but we have an inequality, so this defines a half space. And uh, if I have three rows, this defines three half spaces, and I have here indicated this these three half spaces with these different shadings, um, where the shading always is the forbidden side of the inequality. So taken together, these half spaces, they either define the empty set, so there is no solution to the linear program, or if the feasible space is not empty, it is always a polytope. What is a polytope? Well, it's a region, it's a solid bounded by half spaces. Yeah? So in, uh, in if a polytope in two dimensions, you know, it's always something which has uh, planar faces and um, those faces meet along, depending on the dimensionality, and meet along uh, ridges or meet along or meet in corners. Okay, so this would be, uh, so this A X no more than B always defines a polytope. And in this particular case, um, this feasible region would be this thing here. If I'm now trying to minimize the cost vector over this feasible polytope, well, the solution is that corner of the polytope, which is closest to the upper right corner of the image. And that's the LP solution, the solution to the linear program. Yes, there can be cases, there can be degenerate cases. So let's say if this here is my cost vector, there can be a degenerate case where one phase of the polytope is exactly normal um, to the cost vector. And the polytope goes on and on. And in this case, um, the two corners, but also all points in between, they have the same objective value. They're all optimal. However, I can always find um, amongst, if there are many optima, um, then I can always find a vertex which is no worse than the others. And in general, uh, you know, this is somewhat unlikely that one of these faces is exactly orthogonal to the cost vector. Um, so a more typical case would be like this, cost vector is pointing here, and then I have one best solution. And then depending on how this polytope is structured, I might have other solutions that are nearly as good, etc. But usually um, there is a, except in degenerate cases, there is a clear winner, there's a unique solution, which in this particular example here is shown by the location of this turquoise star. All right, so much for linear program, but sometimes, well, when we have integer linear programs, we have these integrality constraints. So this was here in the equation above, um, you know, this thing here. So it means the eligible solutions are the points in a Cartesian lattice. And the points of the Cartesian lattice here in two dimensions I have indicated by the position of these red dots. So taken together, these constraints mean I need only consider 
the red dots inside the feasible region. And then amongst those, I'm looking for, well, the best, the red dot, which has the lowest cost, um, indicated here by the location of this green star. Now, why is that such a big thing um, to have the integrality constraint or not? Um, the thing is that a feasible polytope, that is a convex region. It's something which is easy to optimize over. But these lattice points mean that the problem uh, needs to be nearly brute forced. So if we now have this finite collection of red points inside the feasible region, um, in some sense, I need to try them out one by one to see which one is best. I don't completely need to try them out one by one. I, I can use um, so-called branch and bound methods. So for example, um, I could, um, these integer points, um, I could split them here into two halves, the one to the right of this line and the ones to the left of the line. And then if I solve the left linear program, not the integer, just if I solve the left linear program, uh, and if I find that this left linear program, which must have a better cost than the best integer linear program, if that is already worse than some integer solution that I found in my other half, then I need no longer study in detail the solutions on the left. Okay, so that would be a branch and bound approach. But the difficulty um, of this linear programming stems from the fact that um, simple rounding procedures do not work well. So let me explain. The LP solution we said was given by the location of the star. And naively you might think, okay, so I'm looking for an integer solution. Well, I'm going to round this solution to the closest integer. And if I do that, well, the closest integer, I think, will be this one here. Unfortunately, it does not lie in the feasible region. So it is integer, yes, but it violates this constraint here. And what you see here is that the best integral solution, you know, it's not the closest integer, it's not the second closest integer, it's not the third closest, it's not the fourth closest, it's not the fifth closest, it's not the sixth closest um, integer solution. It is actually, um, it is actually very far away. You know, the best integral solution is there. So even this two-dimensional example, if I try to, you know, look at the integral solutions in the vicinity, I would have to iterate over quite a few integer solutions before I find the first permissible one. And if you now don't have an optimization problem in two dimensions, but in a thousand dimensions, which is, you know, completely realistic, then, uh, well, you know, imagine how this number of close by integer neighbors explodes and none of them need be feasible. Yeah, hence the difficulty of solving integer linear programs to optimality. Of course, there are heuristics, etc. But um, depending on the instance, these problems can really be super hard to solve. So properties of a linear program, um, the constraints define the feasible region. The feasible region is always a polytope. The cost vector gives the preferred direction or the opposite of the preferred direction. And if I now walk as far as I can against the direction of the cost vector, and if I try to stay inside this feasible region, the polytope, then an optimal solution can always be found in a corner of the feasible polyhedron, if, it's, if that one is not the empty set. And well, what solvers do people use for general linear programs? Um, the most famous algorithms are 
the simplex algorithm, which starts at one corner of the feasible polyhedron and then walks along edges of the feasible polyhedron until it finds the optimal corner, or the interior point method, which uses a physical analogy, I would say, um, in the interior point method, you pretend that the cost vector that's like an electrostatic potential, which increases linearly in a particular direction. So let's say the electrostatic potential here would be given by this shading, by the blue shading in the background. And uh, then you have a charge and you set off or you liberate this charge somewhere inside your feasible region. And now the charge tries to you know, minimize its uh, energy. And in this physical analogy model, you uh, put um, like a wall of opposite charges, if I can say that, um, along the faces of your feasible polyhedron. So these are called barriers. And depending on how short range you make these barriers, um, your solution will be an equilibrium point somewhere in inside the feasible region, hence interior point method. And you start with very soft barriers. Your solution will be somewhere in the middle. And then you make the barriers harder and harder or shorter and shorter ranged. And then your solution will uh, slowly converge or actually fast, quickly converge towards um, the corner, but will never quite reach it. Yeah? So this is the interior point um, method for linear programs. And if you want to solve integer linear programs, well, you can do things like branch and bound over linear programming solvers. Good. Summary. Linear programming is an extremely important class of optimization problems. Linear programs can be solved efficiently. Integer linear programs are hard to solve in general, but not all integer linear programs are created equal. Um, some have special structure which reduce them to easier problems. And famous examples are, well, linear program as a special case. Um, not. I should not just write linear program. I should uh, write linear program with a totally unimodular constraint matrices and integer right hand side. And I will define these terms in a moment. Shortest path problems, you know, are something that can, they're one instance of an integer linear programming, uh, of an integer linear program, just one that happens to be particularly easy to solve. Actually, shortest path problems are themselves a kind of flow problem, and flow problems are the special kind of integer linear program that can be solved with just a linear program. Uh, minimal spanning trees, flow problems, matching problems. Okay, these are the special integer linear programs, and um, the algorithms that we have discussed over the last few weeks are all such special integer linear programs with special, nice, friendly structure that allow for much more efficient solvers than general integer linear programs.